down here at the river. Stop by to pick us up some water. Now we're just going to head back up to our camp, drop some gear off, then I'm going to head down to the lake and get me some cattail for dinner tonight. Just keep watching guys and we'll have some fun. See that guys? That's what we're looking for. Hands get really cold and we're gonna have to get right to the fire. If you can see that color. We're gonna go to the fire real quick. Eat this stuff up and head back to camp. Alright guys. What you're gonna want to do is just kind of split these cattail rhizomes and place them on these coals. You don't have to have a big fire for making this guys, for cooking this I should say. You don't even have to split them, but it's just something I kind of like to do. Just kind of roast them up a little bit, and they taste really good once they're cooked up right. All right, guys, roasted up some of these cattail rhizomes. We're just gonna gather up the rest of these and head back to camp. Got a little bit of a walk ahead of us, but it won't take me too long to get there if I hurry. Alright guys, we've gone ahead and we've made us a platform to set our fire on. The ground's soaking wet right now, so we're going to use this platform to keep it off the wet ground so we don't get robbed of our fire. I also gathered up some cattail. I'm going to take some of this off and use it to ignite this so we can warm up a little bit As that fire is still going, that's having some of this cattail that we cooked over right by the lake. It tastes pretty good. I just kind of chew it up and spit all the stringy stuff out. One more with me too. It's not quite done yet, but see all that white in it.
I've just been eating my dinner and I've been playing with this new knife. It's a kukuri. It's a short kukuri. All the way from Nepal. It's a pretty good knife. It's got kind of a crappy sheath that comes with it. I'm having one made that works a lot better than this one. And you also get these two little knives with it. You get one little sharpening knife, that's what this guy is. And you get one little knife for small tasks. You can use it for skinning squirrels, but it's a little bit small. Let me show you. See how small that is to my, compared to my hand. It's just too small to hardly use. They must have really tiny hands over in Nepal or something because I couldn't really use that. I'd be able to skin a squirrel or something maybe. And this is the little sharpening knife they give you. See that? Works pretty good for sharpening your blade. I'd rather just use a kind of a Smith sharpener, but you just kind of run it through and it sharpens it up pretty quick. As long as it's got an edge on it. As long as you keep it owned, it's pretty much sharp for life. But it's a pretty good knife. I like it. I enjoyed using it. I find you guys something to play around with here. It's got a great edge on it. Feather sticks like crazy. It's got a big, thick spine, it's a big, thick knife. So it's not going to be as good as feather sticking, it's kind of a, like a horror or something, but it does a pretty decent job at it. Cattail's done. We cooked most of it over by the lake, but I wanted to take another one with me in case I got a little hungrier after my walk. And I did. I've also been reading this book, guys. It's a new one that my friend told me about it, and I never really read it before. It's a, called The Outdoor Survival Handbook by Ray Mears. Everybody knows who Ray Mears is. He's the original Survivor Man. Got really, really good stuff in here. Some stuff that you don't see in a lot of other books. And he separates them all by season in this book, so. It tells you how to make shelters for winter time and summertime. It's a really good book for beginners. But we're starting to lose light pretty quick. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera off and I guess I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning, guys. I'm going to go ahead and boil this up some pine needle tea. Slept pretty good last night. The shelter kept me pretty warm. But like I said, it's big enough for three people for I just did a kind of a solo camping trip. 
But I mean, even being as big as it is, it still kept me pretty warm. But you only need to make it half that size. And even the doorway is not, I mean, the doorway is, you know, it's, it's pretty decent, but it could be, you know, about up to here is all you really need. I mean, it works though. Definitely kept me warm last night. No fire needed. I just had that door on and I stuffed up all my little holes that I had where the door we wasn't covering. I just stuffed those up and it kept me nice and warm all night. Pine needle tea smelling so good right now, guys. I let it cool off for about oh, 10 minutes or so. It smells good. Tastes even better. But we're just going to go ahead and let this fire die out. Probably pour some water on it just to be safe. And then we're just going to take off. Hope you guys enjoyed this video on my little camp out here. I wasn't going to do it, but there was a couple of people that said that they thought it would be cool if I stayed the night and filmed it. So I decided why not. And it worked out really well. It kept me warm all night long. The shelter's a little big, but like I said, it only needs to be about half that really but and it'll actually keep you even warmer if it's smaller so and that's big enough for three people but I mean it still kept me warm all night I didn't have any issues the bed was comfortable I mean it, I was nice and toasty all night long but I hope you guys enjoyed my little camp out hit the subscribe button like it leave any comments we'll see you guys next week thanks for watching